All right, this is page one of notes one of math analysis. And we are gonna be talking about radians, which is a way of measuring angles. And kind of what you wanna start with is really a question. The thing that you wanna question, which you maybe have never questioned before because it feels so natural because it's everywhere, is uh, why are there 360 degrees in a circle? Right, that's not a super convenient number. Like why not 100 degrees? And then we could talk about percents of a circle. Why not, I don't know. Um, why not 400 and then each right angle would be a hundred degrees like where did 360 come from? Well It turns out that 360 almost certainly came from uh, it's uh, about It's about the number of days in a year Which is probably where it came from 360 also has certain advantages 360 has a lot of factors right like uh, two three four five six not seven, um, and then you can just keep going, right? Um, tons of factors, and that's a good thing, but really 360 is pretty arbitrary. If there had been 600 days in a year, and of course, we knew at the time that there weren't 360 days in a year, we knew there were more than that, because if you thought there were 360, then what happens is every year you're gonna pick up five additional days uh, of just like being wrong about what a year is, so eventually things that were happening in the winter start happening in the summer. And it's like, you know, you knew you were born at like a cold time of year, but like suddenly uh, now your birthday is in a really warm time of the year. Like it just didn't work. Like they knew that there weren't 360 days, but 360 is super convenient. Had there been 600 days, maybe they would have used 600 days. Like it's a totally arbitrary construct, right? This is based on the fact that it happens to take about 360 days to go around the sun. That's not what we want to base things on in math. So instead of that, we're going to base our angles on something called a radian. So a radian is a way of measuring angles. Oh, I'm not, I'm not even connected here. Hold on. Let's go. Let's get back in there. Stop and go. Okay. So let me just highlight. So a radian. We're going to try to base our angles on a radian. Now, radians are based on the geometry of a circle. Circles don't have a lot of geometry, um, right? So what is a circle? It's a point that's the center, then you have a radius, and then uh, it's just all the points that are that radius away from the center, right? So that's the whole thing. So a circle does, however, because of what it has, has a um, circumference, and the circumference is going to be given by 2 pi r. Now what we're interested in, in this scenario, is this arc right here. So an arc length, let me try to get, try to get my, cop, my uh, highlighters down here, right? So this, S is the arc length, like all the time. So, uh, you know, all the way up through calculus, you'll be using lowercase s for arc length. Capital S is usually for surface area. Um, we have R, the radius. And then we have theta. So theta, this symbol is theta, T-H-E-T-A. Um, and that's our central angle. So a central angle is an angle whose vertex is the center and whose uh, sides intersect the circumference of the circle. So um, that's gonna be what we have. So what we wanna try to do is we wanna think about this angle in terms of the arc length and the radius. So we're really just gonna find the ratio of the arc length to the radius, and we'll see what happens there. So let's see if we can do that. So it feels pretty arbitrary, but uh, we'll see what happens. So in the, in the following table, R is the radius, phi, P-H-I, is the measure of the central angle in degrees. So this is, this symbol is P-H-I, I say phi, some people say phi, that's more of like a fraternity type thing, um, but phi, and it's going to be in degrees, but it doesn't always need to be in degrees. It's not like phi is in degrees, right? Like phi is just a variable. It could be an X, it could be a Y, it could be a Z, whatever, and it's going to be measured in degrees. So we have phi measured in degrees. S is the length of the arc subtended by the central angle. So subtended just means cut off by. So S is the arc subtended, and we are going to find uh, the ratio of S to R. All right, let's see what's going to happen here. So if the radius is 
four. So let's see if we can work this out. All right. So I know that the full circumference would be two pi times four. That's the circumference. And then what fraction of the circumference am I getting? Well, I'm getting 30 degrees out of 360 degrees. So I'm going to do 30 over 360. So this, there's like a lot of simplifying that we can do here. So really we get, um, what should I do? Uh, I'm going to say it's eight pi over 12, which is um, 30 over, oh, thir thir yeah, no, that's right. Eight, eight pi over 12, and then keep, keep simplifying, right? So uh, the arc length is going to be two pi over three. And then what I'm supposed to do is take S and divide it by R. So two pi over three over four. So let's see, two pi over three over four, which is pi over six. Okay, so that's a good start, maybe. I don't know, maybe it's not. Uh, all right, if the radius is r, what would we have? We'd have two pi r, and then we would have 30 degrees out of 360 degrees. So I should really be putting degree symbols. Okay, and so this will be two pi r out of 12, or pi r over six, and then if I do pi r over six divided by r, that gives me pi over six. So that's kind of interesting. No matter what the radius is, if I have a 30 degree central angle, the ratio of the arc length to the radius is always going to be pi over six, it looks like. I mean, it doesn't look like that. We used r, we didn't use a specific number. It always is going to be pi over six. So it looks like um, 30 degrees, and pi over six are related somehow. Uh, if the central angle is 30 degrees, then um, the arc length over the radius will be pi over six. Seems, seems that way. Uh, let's try this. So this will be two times pi, two times pi times 12, and then times 45 degrees out of 360 degrees. So I'm just doing ratio here, which uh, is a really common thing to do. Uh, so I'm going to say it's 24 pi, and then how many of those? So you get 2 and 90 and 4, so over 8. So this is 3 pi. And now I need to do S over R, so 3 pi over 12, which is pi over 4. Now the question becomes, does a 45 degree central angle always match up with pi over 4? Let's find out. So to find out, we'll do it in general. So it'll be... 2 pi r, and then I got 45 out of 360 is going to be uh, 2 pi r divided by 8, which is pi r over 4. And then I'm going to divide by r, and you can see that the r's are going to cancel out. So pi r over 4 over r pi over 4. I feel like I'm actually like highlighting the wrong ones. Like I think I should highlight the one that has R in it because that seems like it makes more sense. So it looks like 45 degrees is going to go with pi over four. And we did it in general. Like we didn't pick up a, spe a specific number. So like it's always the case that 45 degrees will convert into pi over four when we do this arc length divided by the radius, um, which is kind of like, feels like kind of a weird thing to be doing. Uh, but let's talk about that in a second. So two pi times five, and then 60 degrees out of 360 degrees is going to be 10 pi divided by 6, which is going to be 5 pi over 3. And then what we're going to do is 5 pi over 3 divided by 5, the radius, gives me just pi over 3. Hmm. Okay, let's see. Let's see if it happens. So 2 pi r, and then it'll be 60 over 360 is going to be 2 pi over uh, 6, which is pi over 3, pi r over 3. Where's my r? Pi r, pi r over 3. And then we'll do pi r over 3 over r, and we'll get pi over 3. So this seems good. This seems encouraging. So it looks like we have something kind of happening all the time, right? So our arc length in general, our S, seems to be 
2 pi r. I don't, why do I always write on an angle? You don't really know that I always write on an angle yet, but I always write on an angle. All right, let me see. Let me slide this over here. So s in general is 2 pi r, and then we had phi in degrees divided by 360. So this became, we can simplify it, right? We get pi over 180, and then r, and then phi. And then what we did was we did s divided by r, which will be uh, this s thing. So pi over 180 r phi divided by r. So s over r, it looks like, is pi over 180 times phi. So it looks like that's the case. So then when phi was 30, we got um, just pi over 6. When phi was 45, we got just pi over 4. When phi was 60, we got pi over 3. Now, what's really interesting, the values in that last column are called the radian measure of the central angle. So the radian measure, so I'm going to actually write here equals, I'll say theta in radians. Now, what's different about this? It feel, it's really hard to, to kind of like divorce yourself of the notion that degrees matter. Really hard. You're, you've been thinking about degrees your whole life. It's going to take a little while. S over R is 100% based on the geometry of the circle. So S is an arc length. Circles have arc lengths. R is a radius. Circles have a radius. We can calculate the angle just by doing the arc length subtended divided by the radius. Now these angles, pi over six, pi over four, pi over three, they don't feel special to you right now. And the only reason we're focused on those is because 30, 45, and 60 are special to you right now. So it's really this weird scenario where like, we're basing everything on degrees because we're so comfortable with degrees. But I am telling you that this column, this S over R equals theta, that's the one you want to use. That's based on geometry. That is not based on an arbitrary number, right? If we had grown up in a world where uh, there were, I don't know, 600 degrees in a circle, right? So 600 degrees in a circle, we would do something else. So if we had 600 degrees in a circle, then um, S, our arc length, would have been still 2 pi r because that's the circumference of a circle, but then we would have had like phi in our weird degrees out of 600. And then uh, just everything would be different, right? Uh, if we had an angle of like 540, for example, we could plug it in and we would still get s. And then the angles that we took, we would still be doing um, s over r would just have worked out to 2 pi phi over 600, which we could simplify to pi over 300 phi. But since phi is now measured in this weird system where there's 600 degrees, all of your like key angles would just look different. For us, it makes sense to talk about 30 degrees, 45 degrees, 60 degrees. Those become pi over 6, pi over 4, pi over 3, respectively. Those are the radian measures of the angle. So we are going to talk about that extensively, which you need to memorize for sure from this page. Arc length formula, right? So S is going to be uh, in degrees. S is going to be 2 pi r and then phi out of 360, which means that S is going to be pi over 180 times r times phi. Um, and then you need to memorize so memorize this for sure. And then you also, this is some weird highlighting, um, memorize this, and then you also are going to memorize this. These are the key takeaways from this page. We're gonna come back in the next video and talk a lot more about this, but this is a good start, right? So we geometrically can define our angles, which no longer depend upon how many days it took to go around the sun, right? Uh, now it's all based on a circle. If I give you a circle and I give you an arc, and you can figure out the radius, you can figure out the angle that we're talking about. It's a big deal. Um, we'll be back in the next video to keep going. So uh, I hope you find this helpful, and I look forward to doing a lot of pages of notes with you. So uh, see you in the next one.